Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. It's me, Dr. V. Jay Kumar. I make lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. In this lecture series on dynamics of machines, we will be covering a topic on balancing of single cylinder reciprocating engine. In this lecture video, we will be discussing about all the concepts that are related to balancing of single cylinder reciprocating engine. Concepts of primary and secondary unbalanced forces in a reciprocating engine. How to carry out partial balancing of primary unbalanced force in a reciprocating engine. All will be covered. So let's get started. Balancing of masses problems can be broadly classified under two groups. One, balancing of rotating masses. Another one is balancing of reciprocating masses. Under balancing of rotating masses, we have already discussed about balancing of single rotating mass, balancing of several masses rotating the same plane, and balancing of several masses rotating in different planes. From lectures 20 to 27, you can find all the material related to balancing of rotating masses. Under the balancing of reciprocating masses, we are going to discuss about balancing of single cylinder engine, two cylinder engine, multi cylinder inline engine, and balancing of radial engines. In this video, we will be covering about balancing of single cylinder reciprocating engine. Before getting on with the topic, first let us understand some applications where we are required to do balancing of reciprocating masses. Say in IC engines of our automobiles, in locomotive steam engines, in reciprocating compressors, in reciprocating pumps, in rotary genome radial engines in aircraft v engines so wherever we have masses which are reciprocating there we are required to do balancing of reciprocating masses in a reciprocating engine we have reciprocating parts such as piston piston rings and gudgeon pin whenever we have accelerating parts we will have associated inertia forces. The inertia forces cause the unbalance in the reciprocating machines as well. They produce forced vibration on the engine parts. The vibrations will produce excessive noise, will cause undue wear of mating components, will increase the component stresses and subject the bearings to repeated loads, fatigue loads. Therefore, like rotating masses, reciprocating masses are also to be balanced. Now let us understand the concept of primary and secondary unbalanced forces in a reciprocating engine. Consider a reciprocating engine mechanism shown in the diagram where OC is the crank, CP is the connecting rod, P is the piston which reciprocates. We know that unbalanced force in an engine is nothing but the inertia force. So inertia force is equal to accelerating force in the opposite direction. So inertia force of the reciprocating parts is equal to mass of the reciprocating part multiplied by acceleration of the reciprocating part. Let MR be the mass of the reciprocating parts and AR be the acceleration of the reciprocating parts. AR can be found by using the relation omega square r cos theta plus cos 2 theta by n. So multiplying MR with AR, we get the unbalanced force equation. Expanding that equation, we get two terms. The first term MR omega square r cos theta is known as primary unbalanced force. The second term MR omega square r multiplied by cos 2 theta by n 
is known as secondary unbalanced force. From FP and FS equations, we can say that FP would be maximum when theta equal to 0 degree or 180 degree. Same way, FS would be maximum when theta equal to 0 degree, 90 degree, 180 degree and 360 degree. It may be noted that the maximum value of the secondary unbalanced force is 1 by n times the maximum value of primary unbalanced force. That means secondary unbalanced force value will be lesser and hence it can be neglected. That's the reason why we consider only primary unbalanced force in the balancing of reciprocating masses. Now our only problem is primary unbalanced force mr omega square r cos theta. We know the direction, we know the magnitude. We need to balance this unbalanced primary force. How to do that? The technique used is place an imaginary rotating mass of value equal to mass of the reciprocating parts mr and place it at rank pin c this imaginary mass will produce centrifugal force mr omega square r whose horizontal component will be equal to that of the primary unbalanced force this is an imaginary mass and hence it does not have any vertical component now we can add a rotating counterbalance MR at radius RB diametrically opposite to the crank pin C as shown in the diagram. The newly added actual balancing mass MB will have two components namely horizontal component MB omega square RB cos theta which is acting along the line of stroke to its right. The second component is vertical component mv omega square or v sin theta which is acting vertically downwards. Now let us discuss the effect of addition of balancing mass. When theta equal to 0 degree the balancing force along line of stroke mv omega square or v cos theta balances the unbalanced primary force mr omega square cos theta whereas there is no vertical unbalanced force when theta equal to 90 degree there is no horizontal unbalanced force but the vertical unbalanced force would be maximum then the angle is in between 0 degree to 90 degree we will have unbalanced force components in both horizontal and vertical directions. That's why complete balancing of primary unbalanced force is not possible in a reciprocating engine. In many applications, vertical unbalanced forces are considered less dangerous than the horizontal unbalanced forces along the line of stroke. In order to minimize the effect of the unbalanced force, in actual practice, a compromise is made that only a fraction of reciprocating mass is balanced. Instead of balancing the entire MR, we are going to balance the fraction of reciprocating mass, which is nothing but C into MR. So using the expression C into MR into R equal to MBRB, we can determine the magnitude of balancing mass MB and radius of rotation of balancing mass RB. So after adding the balancing mass, still we have some unbalanced forces acting along line of stroke as well as unbalanced force acting along the perpendicular to the line of stroke. Their magnitudes can be determined by using the equations shown. So we get the expression for FRU using which 
we can determine the resultant unbalanced force. Finally, let us understand how much of reciprocating mass to be balanced. What could be the ideal value of that fraction C value? For that, let us consider this numerical illustration. Consider MR omega square R as 1000 Newton and let us take C value as 0 0.7. For these two values, if I determine horizontal unbalanced force and vertical unbalanced force values using the derived expressions for various crank angles, we get this table. When crank angle equal to 0 degree, we get 300 Newton as the horizontal unbalanced force along the line of stroke. Whereas there is no unbalanced force in the vertical direction. When theta equal to 90 degree, along the line of stroke, there is no unbalanced force. Whereas we have about 700 Newton in the vertical direction. If we would have taken C as 0 0.5, we would have got at 0 degree, 500 Newton as horizontal unbalanced force. At 90 degree, 500 Newton as vertical unbalanced force. That might look a good suggestion. But in practice, it is very difficult to manage and it is dangerous to have unbalanced force along the line of stroke than the unbalanced force in the vertical direction. That's why usually they take 2 by 3 or about 0 0.7 as C value for balancing of reciprocating engines. The key takeaways of this lecture video are summarized here for your ready reference. Hope you found this video useful. If so, support this work by liking this video, sharing to your friends, subscribing the channel and hitting the notification bell icon. That's it. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.